Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Pet Talk on the Joe Maxwell Show. I am your host, Joe Maxwell. On today's episode, we have so many interesting things to talk about, but we're going to try to streamline it to two topics. On the first segment, we'll be talking about whether or not a woman should downplay her success to keep or find a man. Have you ever heard a woman can never keep a man because she's very successful? We're looking at the likes of Oprah, Taraji P. Henson, Moabudu, and lots of them. It's been a struggle to keep those two lives successful. However, I've got a question. Do you need a man to make your life complete? We're about to find out from our guests. Take a look at who they are. Hi guys, welcome. Hey, to thanks, so thanks for having me, Joe. How are Thank you? you so much. I'm well, I'm very well. You look <laughs> very amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> you look amazing. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much. I'm very well. Thank you. How are you? you? Know, I, find, I find each time I'm always complimenting my guests, and each time I watch back, I'm like, why do you always have to? compliment on the dress and the <laughs> some people start thinking she's it's like the similar line but they always look so good so do you, <laughs> so do you. we're only reflecting the glory of our host exactly <laughs> I, I agree with that actually <laughs> that's true thank you so much guys for joining right so today's gonna be girl talk it will be girl talk and i want you guys to give me all the sauces and all the juices Woo. like which or shades when we need to show are you ready Let's <laughs> <do it. laughs> so right on this topic of you know should a woman downplay her success to keep or find a man you know we have that you find lots of women there's always a one struggling to keep find a man or i'm having issues in my marriage because i'm constantly out on this you know media around i'm just too busy and my husband is complaining or whatever it is the question is, should a woman downplay her success to keep a man? Yes or no? No. Lamide, yes or no? Okay. I think it's black and white. It's not black and white. Yes it's or no? It's great to me. <laughs> We're in an exact... It's a can I... Can I? We'll, 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 we'll come to the reason you say. But you just got to keep... You can say no. Mm. You can say yes if you want. But mm. should okay. a woman downplay her success to keep to a man? To keep a man. I'll rephrase the question a little bit so that my answer would be clear at all. Yeah. So what I'm going to say is, yeah. should a woman, what you're saying fundamentally, Joe, is that should, should a woman um, basically downplay her success, I'm mm -hmm. saying it verbatim, or should she um, pretend she's not successful, downplay, undermine, downplay in any her, way. undermine her efforts and her downplay. energy? Is your answer yes? Yeah. <laughs> So stroke her man's ego. My answer is no. Right, okay. My answer is no. Okay, so no. So we kind of both agree on that. We've got lots of women that are very successful, that are doing very well right now. And coincidentally, they are not in relationships or they're not married or they're divorced. And it almost feels like the reason that's happening to them is because they're very successful, right? Um, we have obviously. I can't start naming. We've mm. got lots of people who are single and mm. they're doing very well. Mm. Now, before we kind of go into those ones, I think I'm just going to come to you, okay. Tolu. You're single. I, I know, you know, in your, at least in your <laughs> own space and corner, mm. you're, you're, you're doing very well. You're mm -hmm. successful, okay. you know, back mm -hmm. now, I'd say. Um, and I'm sure being in that gen of being single, you would have probably met a few guys here and there and have issues. So I'm just going to go into you mm -hmm. for like a few, six or seconds. Okay. What's your experience and how can you relate to this topic? I can definitely relate to this topic, um, especially because it's based on perception. That the perception is if you are single and you're successful, it's because you're successful. But there's no other factor. Like maybe I met the wrong guys, or maybe you know we were together and our lines started deviating. It has nothing to do with that. It must be because you're successful. That must be the reason why you're single. So that's why my initial thought was, mm, why should you downplay it? A good guy. A guy who's got a good head on his shoulders would not be intimidated by your success. He would want to compliment it because you're complimenting him. Mm. That's how I say it. Um, but I've met so many guys who have said, oh, you must be this way because you're successful. And that is what pushes them away versus, you know, get to know me. I'm actually quite sweet. I like to cook. I love to dance. Did you know that? No. All you saw was a title. 
Um, so for me, the question is one that actually strikes a chord because I'm living it. Mm. And it's based on other people's perception versus the reality of the person you are. And one part of it is successful. The other parts are the bits that make you you. Yeah. So are you, finding, are you finding it harder being a single person to actually, again, f finding a man or having a man does not make you a complete person. Correct. But of course, we all want to Correct. be married yes. and have start a family. Yes. But do you find that that's making you, it's, it's almost like a struggle? Yeah, I think it's, yeah. it someone. narrows your criteria yeah. down. Like your pool down. Mm. Um, because okay. the more successful, quote unquote, whatever that means to a person, the more successful you are, the more, I guess, I don't want to use the word standard, but there's certain things that you look for because you want to ensure the person's on the same right frame of mind as you are, going the same direction you are, and so on. So it narrows the pool down a bit. So in terms of finding a man, um, I'm not averse to dating someone who's not in my industry or I'm not averse to dating somebody who makes less than I do because that's not what makes life turn. Um, but are you comfortable with that? Um, are you also comfortable with the fact that I don't want to be the ultimate breadwinner? Mm. So I might push you to be a bit more ambitious or a bit more driven. That's Do you understand what I mean? So like it, it narrows that pool in terms of the kind of people yeah. that you're interacting with, with. and the kind, of pe the kind of people that get you as a person. As a person. Right. Yeah. Okay, thanks for that. Let's yeah. bring this home a little bit. And I say home, into the family. So you're married, Lamy. You've been yes, married I for am. 10 years now, right? Yes, I am. Do you... What's, so whilst we've heard the being single and trying to find a man... Let's talk about the keeping the man, right? Keeping, okay. keeping the home. Okay. I know you're, it's a woman, you know, you've got your nine to five and also you've yeah. got your, you know, your, your stuff on this side. Absolutely, that you yeah. do. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you find that? How do you find keeping, still doing all this wonderful stuff mm -hmm. and still keeping, you know, keeping the man happy? Okay, I think fundamentally, um, when a woman meets a man, mm. there are two scenarios in which uh, a woman could be seen as settling for a man that's below her station which then brings about the question of whether or not he's comfortable enough to stay in the relationship. So I think the first one is a woman meets a man who is driven, is ambitious, he's got a lot of potential, is educated, is highly skilled. However, he hasn't had the opportunities yet to lead him to that level that he needs to be at. So let me, let, 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 let me cut you short there. Are you able to relate? Because I think what will be good for our guests to know is sometimes it's good to talk in theory, sometimes it's good to talk in practical. But I think what will be good to, to know is have you ever found yourself? So I want us to be very practical, hence why mm. I'm saying you're a married woman. Let's go into you a little bit. If you don't mm. mind, by all mm. means, you know, I if, don't you don't, yeah. if you've experienced that in any way where you, okay. found, you found yourself in that area, and it's, it should be a little I bit. I think I was talking about my experience, but okay. it sounded theoretical. Right, okay. So when I met my husband, I was a qualified solicitor, I was working, I'd bought my flat. And I was driving a little jeep and I was extremely comfortable, at least by my age group. Mm -hmm. At the time, I was in my 20s. And by normal standards, I was seen as a successful person because I was a professional and I was earning my kick. My husband, uh, when I met him, he had a lot of potential, highly educated. He was doing his MBA, uh, but he, hasn't, he hadn't settled as much as I had settled. But I saw the potential and I saw the drive and I saw the ambition. And what I did, a woman doesn't necessarily have to downplay her success, but she needs to have an attitude check. And that attitude check is what you call humility. You need to be respectful. You need to not condescend to a man that's still in the process. Of getting to where he needs to be and a man that's got a lot of potential that's driven that's ambitious that's educated or highly skilled is securing himself to understand that that woman is a compliment to him just buttressing what Tolu said as well that that woman is a compliment to him that woman is a catalyst to his next level if he if he's swallows a huge yeah. dose of humble pie mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and knows how to recognize that this woman is a blessing to me. I don't need to be intimidated by her. I don't need to be insecure. I don't need my ego stroked. Can you I just jump in? Because this, this is the bit where I would actually kind of almost reframe my answer. Because I love everything you're saying and I think it's so key. But I think a lot of the focus is on the woman. Mm. I'll give you an example. Yeah, I'll give you an example. I meet a guy 
And it's a scenario where it's very, very, like the setting is I walk in with a girlfriend for her to meet somebody that she knows uh -huh. and we're having coffee. Uh -huh. It's someone I'd met previously before only once and we said hello and that was the end of the story. Uh -huh. So he doesn't know much about me and I was actually very quiet that day because I wasn't, I wasn't feeling too well. So I wasn't there to brag about, first of all, I came by tube. I wasn't driving. So you don't know what kind of car I have. Uh -huh. You don't know if I own my flat. You don't know anything about me. I sit down and he just starts talking. He's a doctor. He's qualified. He's doing very well. Very handsome man clearly ahead in his field mm. um, and then he turns around to me and says oh by the way what do you do now I don't know if it was his in his I, in his mind he must have thought maybe I was lesser than so maybe I was girl, or whatever so I turned around and I said oh I do this and he went oh what does that mean and I explained a little bit it couldn't have been more than 30 seconds and he turned around and he went oh I can see why you're single he didn't ask if I was single he didn't oh know if gosh. I was single all he knew was that, that I didn't was... have a ring on my finger oh, okay. and the reason why he said that was because I guess I get passionate about what I do and so when I was talking I think he felt like wow she's confident uh, and that threw him but he, why are you throwing you're so a doctor hold on, hold on a minute that was supposed to be a date right no okay. no just, no no it was, was just it was so much right. okay. I found out later she was trying to hook us up okay right? right but she didn't tell me she just said oh I'm going to introduce you or whatever it was only for me to react I sat back it really upset me I got so angry that was when I that was the first and only time I think I've ever said to somebody other than you're just not si you're very silly to the fact that yes I do do this I went to school to do this I was very much about my accolades at that point because I was like you have no right you to sit there yeah. and yeah. diminish yeah. what I'm trying yeah. to say simply because to you you're intimidated but why are you intimidated first of all I'm pretty sure he earned more money than I was at the time so I realized it's a frame of mind yeah, it you put it on the man yeah. and was, but actually he was he was immature he insecure why there was no need he didn't know anything about me mm -hmm. so actually no I don't want to downplay my success in that instrument you're not for me yeah. you and I are not so meant I to think, jail yeah so I think I mean that's that, yeah. that's, a, that's a valid thing that you've said and I think just quickly going back to what Lamide said earlier in terms of a woman you have to I think I think you don't have the criteria is mm. still a lot mm. on a woman because mm. the expectation is still is still all down to a woman mm. whereas I think it's important for a man to understand to, to be humble I agree. absolutely that's why I said just swallow a huge dose of humble pie. Be humble. Um, be mature enough. There's a lot of maturity. Maturity, we use the, I think we use the word maturity very loosely. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes a lot for a man to look at a woman and say, she's successful. She's doing more than, she's earning more than I'm earning. She's more, she's more socially successful. Mm -hmm. She's probably more physically attractive than I am. Yeah. However, I'm going to see her as a, a motivation yeah. uh, for me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see her as an inspiration. I'm going to see her as a catalyst for me to get to, to where, to get to to where yeah. I need let's to get just, to yeah, not even surpass and that's what happens mm -hmm. my friends and I have a very close knit of friends and we all have that in common where when we met our men we, we've got a chartered accountant we've got a project manager we've been doing we've, we've got solicitors and when we met our men they were they were they were still in the they process so, yeah of getting yeah they yeah, were in the process that. But, but so now we laugh about it. You say, oh, you remember that car your, your husband used to but drive? But did you downplay your then success we, we, to get him? You, you don't downplay your success, but you have an attitude check. And yeah. that attitude check is you being extremely supportive, extremely, um, extremely, no, you, be, you believe in them to the point that they, they suddenly grow wings. I and get they it, start I get to it. Let's, 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 let's talk about some women are fortunate now let's go to the ones that are less yeah, fortunate mm -hmm. right let's talk about the women that are doing very well and they're married to men who would never support anything mm -hmm. they're doing mm -hmm. you know it's the man's problem yeah okay so the question is for those women who find themselves in that situation i cannot go for a media run i cannot do stuff you know i've got an event coming up i can't do that because my husband wouldn't allow me to do that so in that instance, mm. she's got, she's thinking, I've got the business, I've got a marriage, I've got my children. So I, what happens is she's living in someone else's shadow because correct. she cannot do what she's supposed to do. I think what would be good is to give us an example of how to downplay your, your success or your attitude. Okay, I think basically what I'm saying is you don't necessarily dim your light or downplay your success because it's there. You can't hide success. It's not something you can necessarily hide. So it's not about downplaying your success to stroke your man's ego. It's about us, having an us, attitude so check. Be, let's be practical. Yes. What's a, give us an example. For example. So for example, you could be aspiring to purchase a property. And the kind of property you're looking at, based on your bank account, could be like a six bed, you know, detached, massive swimming pool. And based on your partner's 
uh, income and his bank account is probably looking at three bed properties. Listen, I don't know. I, 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 I don't agree. agree. I don't Let me agree. tell you why I don't agree. I don't agree. I don't agree. agree. I don't I don't agree. I haven't finished. You I haven't, haven't finished. Mm. Now, what I'm trying to say is because for me, marriage is so. It's a union. You're now one. So what I can, what for me, if you don't, you're not ready to be the sole breadwinner. You're not obviously not going to be ready to be paying the entire bills. You need to come together and agree, and probably just. I mentioned six bed. The lady was looking at a six bed. He's looking at a three bed. You can compromise and get a four or five bed, based on both income. You're not downplaying your success. But you have to reach some compromises until the man rises. And what if he doesn't? To your standard. But what if he doesn't? With but nurturing. What if he doesn't? By my, you've asked me to speak by experience. Yes, but that's With your support. With nurturing your man's potential. His drive. His ambition. And you're the catalyst. He's looking at you. You're his motivation. You're having kids now. He's now inspired to do more. Trust me. Can I, you he know, will rise yeah. and even surpass right, okay. your right. level. Okay. Any man can. Men have egos. The little ones, I have sons, so I know. The little ones, the old ones, even the old papas, they're <laughs> wired with it. But there's okay. nothing we can do we're about gonna, it. Can we say we're, we're, that to nurture it as a good, virtuous that. woman and wife? We're going to cap on that because some of the things we don't, I don't personally agree mm -mm. with. But um, I think, you know, we can, we can all, I mean, that's a very, I've, I've had a lot of people ask me questions about, oh, I want to buy this property here, but my husband can't afford it. She, what should happen? Should we just go move to a one bedroom? I've kind of can't no, afford it. You come I together. Or even me, when I wanted to buy a car. Wait, I'm single, so I'm not even speaking within the frame of marriage, I can only learn from married women. But in terms of being a single woman that has to downplay her success, when I was buying my car, the advice I got was, do you want to marry? If you want to marry, don't buy that car. I was like, why? Because if a guy sees you in that car, there's no way he's going to approach That's you. The, the funniest part is my friend I wanted to hook me up with a guy. He liked me from seeing me. He, he took my number. We got down to the car park and he said to my friend, her husband said, I'm throwing her number away. I will not call her. And it was like, why? Well, I was like, see the car she drives. And I was like, are you joking? Based on a car, if that is your limitation, you're not the guy for me. Mm. Because you know yeah, what? Anyone can lease a car. I'm sorry, you don't even know if I bought it. Know the you know, of the car. for me, it could be my brother's car, my dad's car, yeah. it could be my car. Right, but yeah. if that is your limitation, you're not the man for me. Do you know what, guys? We can be here forever because I've still got lots of questions that I want to ask. Time is definitely an essence. Guys, I really want you guys to join this conversation. Mm -hmm. You need to comment. We know we haven't talked about everything. There are lots of questions that I have here that I haven't even asked, but we're so time conscious. Join the conversation by leaving us a comment. If there's anything at all you want us to, you know, talk about or shred or even on a monologue, let us know. Leave, a, leave us a comment. You can email us at info at joemaxwellshow.com. That's it for us on this segment. We'll be right back. And when we come back, we'll be talking about something a little bit more juicy as well. We'll be talking about <laughs> the singles versus the married friends. You know how some married, you know, some married friends say, oh, I can't cope with my single friends. And some single friends say to you, girl, that's my married friend. So she's been married. She thinks she's everything, you know. But anyway, we're about to find that and we'll be right back. Right, guys, welcome back to the second segment of today's episode where we'll be talking about... <laughs> single versus married friendship. Right. I know I've had my struggles with my single friends. I wonder if you have too. But anyway, like I always say, it's not about me, it's not about my opinions, it's about what our guests have to say today. Still <laughs> with us and set today is our lovely Lamide and our amazing Tolu. Hello. Right. So we know Tolu is single, Lamide is married. So hopefully we can kind of get a bit of a mm -hmm. bit of both worlds there. Right, so. Right. <laughs> Single versus married relationship. I'm just going to go to you straight mm -hmm. to because, And I want you to be very real. Okay. Yeah. You know, so let us know what we've been doing that isn't right. Yes. Is it true that it's hard for a single, for two girls to be good friends and one is single and one is married? No, my two best friends are married. Okay. Um, I think it depends on the person. Mm -hmm. There are those that view marriage as the end all be all. Mm -hmm. And for them to succeed in married, marriage, they need to let go of anyone who's not married because they're not going towards the same line they are. I don't think that's the reason. Oh, I've had people tell me that. Mm -hmm. So I've had close friends who once they got married said, it's not personal. I just, I'm moving up. I'm learning certain things. These people have a different perspective and that's what I want. So they've completely diminished what I have to bring to the table as your friend, mm. which means that you no longer have the benefit of a different voice, a different perspective on the things that matter to you. That's okay. That's what you want to do, but you're no longer my close friend. Okay. We're okay with that. Wow. But I find that insulting because 
a status such as marriage is yes. not something that you know like you know you it's a privilege that you found someone who loved you back and you love them but it doesn't mean that the person that hasn't got that doesn't have anything else to add to you mm -hmm. or that they wouldn't end up getting married is correct right? yeah salami day well, I would be speaking from experience. I um, have more married friends now than single friends. And it's not necessarily down to me. It's basically down to the fact that my single, single friends have felt, um, I've actually had one who walked away and then recently caught up with another friend who was single and said, I was just tired of living in Lamide's shadow. That's why I walked away. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have a sh shadow. I didn't have that yeah, big light yeah. before we got married, before I had kids, before I moved house. Um, it was after all of that happened that she felt like, okay, I'm tired of living in your shadow, I'm out mm. of here. Yeah. Um, if I've had friends walk away from me, I don't think it's been down to me. I think it's been down to them not feeling uh, like we have that much in common anymore, or you're always busy, or you're always talking about maybe this school you, and that school. You, and do I'm do not you interested. think that that could also be as a result of you excluding her in certain things? You know how mm. you would rather she's used to girl chat every time, but girl chat is starting to reduce as she feels. You okay, uh, uh, there, there are a couple of things I'm going to say, Joe, and you might not agree with me. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't excluded anyone because I got married. But as humans, I think we're naturally uh, wired to gravitate towards uh, people that we have things in common with. Hmm. So we find that when I find that when my, most of my friends now, like I mentioned, are married, and it's because our issues are now like, okay, what schools are these kids going to go to? Um, you know, scholarships here. What's going on there? What are people doing? Extracurricular. But why, does, why can't your friends, single your friends, si my, my single that. friends can have that opinion, but they decided that they wanted to, like, they go on girl trips abroad. They don't necessarily invite me, or Lamide wouldn't want to come because she's got childcare issues oh, or commitments, or she's always busy, or weekends that she's never available. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, I think for one, it's just a natural consequence of um, people moving on in life mm -hmm. where like-minded and people who have more things in common, more issues in common, try, tend to you just gravitate, you gravitate towards one another. And it's that way. But I believe that, like Tolu said, where there is genuine love and commitment mm -hmm. and where there is a lack of envy, there is mm. no reason why right, yeah. single okay. and married friends can be, can be friends. shouldn't Agreed. be friends. I still have some single Agreed. friends. Geographically, we can't always be together now because mm -hmm. she's moved to Nigeria. Yeah. However, we're still tight. Right. We right. still talk about yeah. everything, everything and anything. Everything you know, but I know she has good love for me. Mm -hmm. But majority of my Let's, single friends, I have to say, yeah, did it. sort of fallen fall away. away. Well, let's yeah. just pack you there. Um, Tolu, I'm just going to move to you quickly. Mm -hmm. There's this thing about all oh, the single, per you know, because you're single, you have more times, you know, more, more time in your hands I wish. to kind of do mm -hmm. whatever you want mm -hmm. to do, right? So there's always this, oh, yeah, Tolo has a lot, I'm too busy, I'm too busy. Mm -hmm. How do you cope with that? Well, obviously, friends, I mean, I know you did, you did yeah. say you have two good friends mm -hmm. and they're married, mm -hmm. but I'm sure you've had your times and moments oh, yes. them where they just feel like, oh, I'm the busiest person in this world, and yeah. Tolu's, you know. Yeah. I mean, one of my best friends um, actually has three kids. Um, and at a time, I think there were three under five, um, and she was genuinely, like all she could talk about was baby talk, because that's all that's going on. She has her hands mm. full. As a good friend, in any relationship, you have to understand different seasons people are going through. Mm. Like when she was going, when she was getting married, I had to understand she was getting married, she's really happy. So we'll pray together about those things, but we'll, I, you'll be there for your friend at the mm. time. If I was going, when I'm going through stuff, and I had, I remember I went through a big breakup halfway through, I think she had just given birth, oh no, she was pregnant with her third, third baby, um, and she was overwhelmed, she had two children, blah, 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 um, and I had to say to her, this is about me now, I need you for me. And at that moment, she might only have my time at 1 a.m. after all the big kids have gone to bed. She's put the husband to bed too. And everything else she's had to do for the day. And then she's got my time. But I know that even that half an hour she's given me, it's a sacrifice because she could be sleeping mm -hmm. before someone came, came well, to wake up. You're a good friend. I was just going to say, you, you are, you yeah, are, you are friend, one of a kind. Too. You are yeah. one of a kind. I hope she can hear no. that. <laughs> <laughs> single ladies would have taken offense yes that I don't care if you have all these yeah, kids what about me you know I'm, I'm yeah. going through this mm -hmm. and you can't even drop a baby for me that's, that's how people that's, think that doesn't make sense not everybody but that doesn't make sense but, but I, don't, I don't see it as sacrificial I think it genuinely doesn't make sense even between two single friends you know you're gonna go through different things in life and at different points one person is gonna be weaker than the other so if you genuinely have friendship and you genuinely love the person love. and you have a long-term view in this thing mm -hmm. then you're gonna realize that sometimes I have to park my issue 
issues. And sometimes yeah. I can't just call her yeah. when I need her yeah. because I know because that at this moment, she disturbing. just cannot handle the yeah. extra bit I have to give her. Mm -hmm. And the other times I'll come back after the fact, she'll be like, oh, you should have called me. And I'm like, but I have to be mm -hmm. considerate. Yeah. You know, I have to know that you, you can't do this. Yeah. You know, but that's you're genuine, very good but friend. that's genuine yeah. friendship. The other people yeah. that I don't care if you don't call me yeah. and if it's about your family and your, your life, good for you. But <laughs> if you have a core, mm -hmm. you, I'm sure you'll pick your core based on people that you get you get Close each other, yeah. so you should be able to, regardless of the walk of life, rejoice with each other, cry yes. with each other, yeah. and, and move stuff. on with yeah. each other. That's, that's, that's a very good point. Now let's twist things a little bit. So, being single, being a single friend, of course, you know you might you're, you're friends with a married mm -hmm. a married woman. How do you feel like? So I know some husbands sometimes. <laughs> we're gonna twist this, you know. Mm -hmm. so, whilst it's okay for. Okay, let me rephrase. Mm -hmm. Right, wait with regards to the husband. Because I know, depending on how close you are with the single, so assuming you guys are so close, you spend so much time together, you hang out together, mm -hmm. then how does it play with the other half as mm -hmm. well? Because um, men, men get, do get jealous. Oh, yes. You know yeah. what I mean? Because sometimes you do have some girlfriends that before you even talk to your husband about stuff, it's your girlfriend mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. Every little thing is your girlfriend because you guys you need mm -hmm. them. Over to you, Lamide. How then do you then balance that sort of relationship? with the husband. Um, obviously, I need to be able to prioritize. And that's why I said having an understanding single friend is key. Like, it's, it's extremely key. Um, I have to prioritize the kids, the husband, the home before anything else. And if you have a single friend that gets that, like Tolu would say that, you know, she gets it. She waits till 1 a.m. to talk to her friend. Mm. She's exceptional. I had friends who would be like, Lamine doesn't have my time anymore. Mm. I don't even care. I'm out, you mm. know, and they walk yeah. away. So, but, how, so, how, so how about, let's, let's talk about, um, having single friends around and how comfortable you are mm. or a woman should be around my husband. You know, I do have a couple of single mm. friends. I think that's another big issue yeah. where people just, every time Tolu comes around, she comes around with X, Y, Z friends. Mm. We're all cool, but I'm just not comfortable. I can't quickly go upstairs and leave them down so mm. I don't know what next. <laughs> you, she can be your girl, but then I don't trust well, myself I, enough to trust Tolu, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. How then do you deal with that situation? Um, I haven't had that situation since I've been married because my friends that I, I wouldn't trust with my husband, I let go of them in the past, mm. a long time ago. I'm proud to say I have a close knit uh, friend. We're, we're very close knit, and we're, I, I trust them. And more importantly, I trust my husband. I mean, if you can't trust your husband with a friend, mm. why? It's not why about the husband. Can I twist it a little bit? Can I twist it a little bit? Can I twist it a little bit? So I have a I have a friend who her husband had a good female friend um, before they got married. They then got married, and the girl did not res respect boundaries. So mm -hmm. she would, even when he had events, would expect to sit on the seat next to him because she'd always done that, or she would expect to do certain things. I'm the single one, right? So mm -hmm. I'm not in the marriage with between mm -hmm. the two of them. And I'm sitting on the outside thinking, is she, this no, girl no, this losing is her right. mind? No. Like, where is the boundary? So for me, I would always say, I don't care who you are. If you see a married couple, you need to, I don't care if you're friends with the husband first or you're friend with the wife first. You, if you're not friend with both of them and you don't know their boundaries and respect the boundaries, you should not be around them. In that instance, as a married woman, pack your bags and go. I give you permission as a single woman. I speak for all single women out there. You know, like why would you allow someone to come into your home and sow seeds of resentment and doubt into your home? You're not wise. But however, it's... In that instance, it's not about trusting your husband. It's about trusting the kind of women that are coming around your husband. Let me flip it. If I am your friend, however, and you do not trust me around your husband, we should not be friends. That's what I said. Well, I think that's what we I, should I, not I be friends. I can't be friends with a yeah. lady. You know, that I can't trust around yeah. my husband. That was way back when we were teenagers and before I knew how to decipher the good mm. things from the bad things. At this stage of my life, after I got married, even whilst I was courting my husband, I think I developed to that point where I knew who I was safe around mm -hmm. and I knew who, who wasn't who, allowed who you shouldn't have to come around me of. and my home. Mm -hmm. yeah. and it's or still, talk to your husband a certain way. Mm. Don't rub my husband's head. Yeah, just say hello, Don't darling. touch my husband's <laughs> knee. That's a whole <laughs> Opposite yeah. sex in the relationship. Yes. My husband's female friends basically I've, I've snatched them, they're now mine. Mm -hmm. And he, he 
doesn't have any female friends. I think, yeah, I think and that's, 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 that's how it should be. That's how it should be. Let's not get it twisted. The fact that mm. you are friends with your husband don't mean that they ain't friends. friends. He doesn't even have any. mean anything. <laughs> so he doesn't have it comes, any. When it, and I think that's why mm. where I probably didn't agree with you where you said, oh, I need to trust my man. Girl, I don't trust me. <laughs> so I ain't gonna trust no one. <laughs> you know, because I don't trust myself. Yeah. So I don't think. No, I, I think I to a particular man. To the other person. I think it's just making sure you have the right person. Yeah. And draw your lines of boundaries early. Absolutely. You know, as a single woman, I draw my lines of boundaries. So don't, don't, there's certain things within our friendship you can't do. So you can't tell me because you're going on a trip, invite me or talk to me or com communicate. Even if it's a couple's trip, just yeah. say, we're doing this and it's a couple's trip. I don't want you to be uncomfortable, but I want you to know what I'm doing anyway. Maybe we'll do our own thing later. Mm. Communication is key. Absolutely. If you make me feel like you're alienating me because of a status I cannot then control, yeah. then we should not even be but friends. We're going to cap it there. Let's yeah. just cap it there because we're going to keep going. We, I think we're gonna have to stop doing this. Every second, I like it. <laughs> Guys, you know, as usual, no matter how juicy a conversation on an episode is, I always like to find out what the guests don't like, and you know what I call it pet peeves. So we're about to find out from Lamidi and Tolu that one thing they don't like. As you can see, they're full of the fire in them. So you better know not to do those things whenever you see them. And we're about to find out now. Hi Tolu. Hey. Hi Lamidi. Right. Who should I start with? Let me start with Lamidi. Yes. What's that one thing that, that I hate? Yes. I hate bullies. And I hate bullying of any form. I hate cyberbullying. I hate physical bullying. I hate passive aggressive bullying. <laughs> I hate subliminal bullying. Ooh. I hate bullying at work. I hate bullying in the marketplace. I hate bullying. <laughs> <laughs> I deal with bullies and rude people. <laughs> I Honestly, I like I like how you've kind of worded it. Yes. You've kind of broken it down. Yes. Girl, you said some words I don't even know about. <laughs> so I think you know, bully is a big thing, especially yeah. now that we've got kids. Mm. It's yeah. like you know. Yeah. So yeah, that's the, I definitely. If you don't have anything I, I kind or one. nice or uplifting Just keep to say, keep quiet. Sure. Do not talk. Yeah, yeah. don't talk. Yes. Yeah. Especially people that sometimes it's unsolicited. Yes. Yes. So you know, yes. It's all bullying yes. as well. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like so you just bullying. want to have an opinion mm -hmm. in everything. Yeah. Just and then you put the shot. other person down or you intimidate them yes. or you're, it's no, all no, I hate yeah. bullying. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for letting us know that. Tell you. Over to you. Selfish people. Oh, gracious. I cannot stand selfish people. I just feel like if you're not compassionate, if you're not somebody that's a giver, we won't be friends. Mm. Like if it's all about you, no. Like life is a two-way street. Mm. There is no like one-way road here. Nice so if it's not two-way street, keep it moving. Mm. Right. Thank That's how you I say so it. Much, That's, That's some good one. Yeah. So don't ask me what mine is because <laughs> probably have a couple. Thank you so much, guys, for joining Thank us. Thank you. Today. Thank you so much for having Thank us. You. I've had so much fun on yeah. the <laughs> so I love you my, my girls kind of, you know, all together. So that's it for us, guys, on this episode. Don't forget, we've talked about two things today. Leave us a comment. Leave us a comment. Drop us an email at info at joemaxwellshow.com. Let us know your thoughts. We're definitely, definitely, definitely keen to hear that. Until next time, I am your host, Joe Maxwell.